Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm checking out the Ishin EX120. It is a hexacopter. Now I'm a big fan of brushed hexacopters. You may have seen in the past when I have built custom ones and that used to be the case. You had to go custom if you wanted a brushed hex micro. I used to take the Alien Wii hex board and get that flying and also the frame from microfpv.eu but we don't need to do that anymore because this is a bind and fly brushed hexacopter. I have to make sure that I call it a hexacopter throughout and not quadcopter. I'm so used to doing that. So what do we have? Well it's got a carbon fiber frame. It's sort of an all-in-one frame so I guess if any of that snaps you'll have to replace the frame. We have got eight millimeter Callus motors here, so we should have plenty of power. And then we have got one of these all in one FPV cameras. I think it's the Ishin EF01, one of my favorite FPV cameras that are all in one. So it's got a video transmitter and camera at the same time. So it's a CMOS camera. And it's a little bit heavier than the all in one cameras that we are used to, but because this is a hexacopter, it has got a little bit more power than we have with a quadcopter. So I really like the configuration of this one. It's a really nice frame. So we have got nicely colored propellers for orientation. So two black at the front there and then we have these orange ones here and you can also see at the back as well we have a LED strip which is configurable via the DIN so it's connected to the flight controller and we also have got a voltage buzzer on here and a lost model alarm as well however mine wasn't set up as a lost model alarm so I'll go through that a little bit later the flight controller is a SP Racing F3 Evo it is configured in 90 degrees so it's facing that way I guess that is to fit it in this frame a little bit better so it looks like we've got a micro JST connector here which the camera is plugged into and then underneath here we've got sort of like this foam pad now uh, Ishin love to use foam pads and that seems to be keeping all the wires in check now the motors are plugged in using again 1.25 pitch 2 pin JST connector so if you have a motor burn out then I guess you can swap them quite easily. And then we have a rubber band here for the battery. So this is a two cell model which is nice. So we've got a Ishin branded 450 milliamp two cell battery with a balance port using micro lozzy there. So the quadcopter weighs 64 grams in this configuration. And then with the battery it's 86 grams which isn't bad at all for a hexacopter. So as I say it's a bind and fly so it's come with the FlySky A8S receiver so it's an iBus receiver which is very similar to SBus and the antenna is just sort of tucked around here however you can see that we have got access to the bind button easily so that is just there. I've also got this nice platform on the top as well I think a lot of people will be wondering hmm could you stick maybe a Mobius Mini on there but I don't think so I think that's slightly too big and the propellers would catch. You could probably hang it underneath but really this one is going to be an acro flyer you don't really want to add a Mobius Mini on there and if you do want to do that I would suggest decasing it and I think it would pull it because two cell battery but of course this band here really is for the battery to go underneath there but yeah it's a nice design I like it the only thing that I noticed with it really is the camera isn't in very securely it's using a rubber band around some tabs down here and you can see there that even though it's got like a foam pad underneath it it does move and I think that may cause some vibrations in the air so I'll have to check that out. Let's check the camera lens so that's glued in nicely. 
of course we have got a button on here to go through all of the different channels and bands so a long press will change through the different bands and then a, a short press through the individual channels there and then on this side here we've got a micro USB connector to configure the flight control now it came with clean flight installed on it which is a little bit of a shame now I have gone ahead and installed beta flight on there because we do have a bootloader pad on this flight control it's one that I've used quite a lot in the past the, the micro lozzy comes out of the side there so I'll show you my beta flight setup and then of course to bind to it I'm going to be using my FlySky FSI 6X transmitter now as this is a 10 channel transmitter I've got an set up all of these switches to my liking so I have got my mode switch here so angle horizon and acro then I have got my arming here and then I've got loss model alarm here as well so using three of the extra auxiliary channels there and of course to set that up you go into the system and then aux channels and then change the switch numbers to channel five six and seven however I think I changed the buzzer accidentally to aux four with this one that's not too much of a problem so let's see what else you get given in the package so Looks like we've got a spare set of props, only this time the colour is reversed, so we have got two orange and then we've got four black in there. So let's take a look what else is in this little package here. So we have got a USB charger here for the battery and that charges via the balance port. Got a spare band and we also have got a Velcro strap as well, however it doesn't have one of those feed through gaps in it so I don't really like these velcro straps I'll probably just stick with the band that's underneath we also got some velcro here as well probably to attach to the battery so you're not given any, any spare batteries in this package which is a bit of a shame but if I know hexacopters well then I think this one's going to fly really nicely because we've got more motors, it means that we've got more resolution. I found in the past that hexacopters are easier to tune than quadcopters and they are just as versatile when it comes to acro and flying smoothly so looking forward to getting this one in the air. Okay so here I am in the Betaflight configurator, you get this from the Chrome App Store. Of course this model comes flash with clean flight so you are going to have to download Betaflight and flash it to it if that's what you want to do I recommend that you do that so you need to select the SP Racing F3 EVO remember EVO is very important if you flash the non EVO version that's not going to work select the latest version load the firmware online and then flash the firmware to it I had no problems doing that so you can see there that I've got the Hexacopter plugged into the computer via a USB cable and it's saying COM20 up the top there so let's connect to it and I'll just show you the different settings that I changed. I'll go into expert mode here so if you go into the porch you can see that. Now this is confusing me about Betafly. Can you see that? I seem to have three UR1s. I don't know if that is a mistake. If you know let me know in the comments but the last time I had this issue I seemed to have a conflict with telemetry but there's no on-screen display with this model so that shouldn't be too much of a problem so we have got the Serial RX switched on on the UART2 for the receiver so let's go into the configuration here now this is important when you set it up in Betaflight you need to set up the mixer as a hex X and you also need to set the board alignment to 90 degrees as well otherwise it won't fly very nicely and then it's set to brushed up here and we've also got the PWM frequency set to 16,000 and I've turned motor stop off because I like to have the motor spin up when I arm it and then also this option ticked here because I'm going to be arming on an auxiliary channel. The minimum throttle is set pretty low at 1040, the max throttle 2000 which is correct for FlySky. Then if we scroll down here I have got the receiver set to serial based receiver 
and that is for the fly sky receiver and then i bust down here as well for the protocol that has the least amount of delay so the vbat is enabled so i don't have the battery plugged in at the moment but it is enabled so it does come through to the buzzer and I've set the minimum cell voltage very low because I find that when you have these brushed models they can really sag the battery and it will still fly at 2.9 volts and then when you disarm it will shoot back up to like 3.4, 3.7 so I find that the battery telemetry is only really useful on these brushed models if you set the warning lower than it should be so current meter is enabled as well, however we don't have an on-screen display so we can't really use that and then also RSSI enabled, we can't really use that either and then over here we have got 2K, 8K for the PID loop frequency because it's an F3 and you need to enable LED strip if you want to have the LED working the same way it's configured and I'll talk to you about that in a bit and telemetry enabled as well so let's go over to the failsafe it was set to drop out of the box which is fine on to pit tuning and I just bumped the D up to 50 and I found that it flew nicely like that I know a lot of people say that's too high but for me it felt really locked in with that. I tend to find these brush models need a slightly higher D than usual and I have got the Super 8 bumped up to 0.8 as well. So everything else here is standard. Then if I go on to the receiver tab here I'm just going to turn on the transmitter so you don't need the battery plugged in for the receiver to power up which is nice so we've got AETR for fly sky there and then you should be able to see my different modes there so and my aux channels as well and I've got this aux channel set up incorrect so it's set to aux 2 and aux 5 I messed up a little bit but that's fine if we go into the modes next so you can see there that I've got arming on a two position switch I've got angle horizon and acro on the aux 2 3 position switch and then I've got the beeper on that two position switch but I've actually switched it to the aux 4 because I doubled up on one of the channels accidentally there now LED strip if you want to move over to beta flight and keep the LED sequence so you can see it here then you have to go into the CLI and save the information so if I go into the CLI first of all going to type version so you can see I've installed the latest version which is 3.16 and then if you want to keep the LED sequence if you type in dump here and then if we locate the LED settings and copy them into a text document or something like that then we can copy it over so you can see here that from here it's got LED if we go from there all the way down to about here copy that put it in a text document then when you install beta flight paste it into the CLI type save and it will save your LED strip settings so there you go that is my settings in beta flight so I'll just show you here what those LEDs do when we move the controls so when you arm the lights go blue and then if you throttle up nothing happens however if you put in roll then this one flashes yellow and roll left this one also flashes yellow back they both flash forward nothing happens and your let's just see that I don't know if I'm accidentally I think I'm accidentally catching there yeah so your does nothing of course you are going to need something to view the FPV feed. I'm going to be using my Fatshark Dominator HD3s with the Fatshark Diversity Receiver Module, a Invader Patch Antenna and a Omway Cloverleaf Antenna. It's right hand polarised to match the polarisation of this model here. Okay let's go for a takeoff. It is such a gloomy day so apologies for that. Look at those lights going as I'm putting the controls in there. Let's go for a punch out. Wow, that's great. Loads of punch. It's 
zippy as well. That is very gloomy, but I can see those LEDs fine. Wow. Almost like a 2S brushless model. Okay, let's go into acro mode. Oh, does acro fine? I think this might be the first time I've flown a hex line of sight. I like it. Plenty of power to pull out of those maneuvers. Look at that. Okay, let's get close up to the camera if I can. Fairly windy day, but it's coping with it fine. Ah, oh, I love a hex. It was pretty smooth. Okay, let's come in for a landing and let's do some FPV with it. So just as I thought, it flies really nicely. Now there is a little bit of vibration coming through from the camera, but I think that's because it is secured using that rubber band. And I think if I maybe cable tied it to the frame, then I wouldn't get that. The flight time was really good, 4 minutes 40, so can't complain about that at all. The range was really good as well with this receiver and also the 25 milliwatt camera. So yeah, I really like it. Flies really smooth and there's not any props in shot either because they are nicely spaced apart. So I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one. I'll leave you with some flying. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.